Tech Job Engine continues to change the Silicon Valley landscape. In order to facilitate all of this expansion, we need to begin building for the next tech migration. Let's speak with the thought leaders who are betting on the future of Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley Commercial Real Estate Fireside Chat Series. Hi, my name is Eric Hayden. I'm the founder of Urban Catalyst. Today we're looking at the future of the built environment in Silicon Valley. Proud to have with us today, Gary Dillabo, one of our strategic advisors and investors in Urban Catalyst. He's also a prolific developer and venture catalyst. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. From his early days leading corporate real estate and sustainability for eBay to venture capital investments in former startups such as Tesla, PlanGrid, Katera, and ViewGlass, Gary has always had an eye for the next big thing. After creating one of the first net zero commercial buildings in the United States, Gary transitioned his focus to larger project called Urban Community with his partner Jeff Ariaga, and ultimately landed on downtown San Jose as the place to cultivate the city of the future. Over the past three years, Gary has assembled over 20 properties in his downtown portfolio. Thank you for sharing with us today, Gary. I'm glad to be here. So Gary, San Jose, it's been amazing to see the transition over the past five years. I wonder if you could share with us your vision of our urban center, you know, really what drew you to it and uh, when did you realize that this was the place to be? Yeah, well, you know, Erica, as you point out, a lot, a lot of people ask us that question, why did you land on San Jose? And um, I, I think there's a lot of positive attributes that the city had that was attractive, but, but some that were most compelling were the billions of dollars of infrastructure that was laid in the ground, in the transportation systems, sports teams. Uh, you have one of the best universities here in the valley that really allows the city to continue to grow. Uh, so we saw that, and then you layer on top of it one of the, the best uh, political engines, I think, in the Valley, really get, kind of gave us the perspective that this is a place to invest our time. Once you get past that, uh, that initial overview, you start to see what I think is probably the most important thing in the city, it's the people. Uh, the, the people in San Jose are, are some of the most um, inspiring and innovative and thoughtful people that I've ever met. Uh, this is the first time in my life where I, I felt so proud to be part of a community that is trying to take on tough problems. You know, as cities and urban areas start to evolve, there's lots of challenges that are created by those. And uh, San Jose seems to have the, the right kind of team of people who are ready for that challenge. And they, um, uh, I, I think this is gonna be a demonstration of, of, of one of the better um, revitalizations of a city in the United States. That's so great. let's talk about our new neighbor, Google. So first of all, you know, what do you think brought Google to San Jose and what types of effect do you think Google have on the city? You know, listen, I, I think that uh, when we first started this endeavor and became interested in San Jose, you know, Google wasn't around. Um, I, I think what attracted us to San Jose was probably the same thing that attracted Google. Um, it, it really can be the, the city of the future. Um, but I think by them coming down here adds a lot of credibility. They're an extraordinarily thoughtful company. Um, I, I think the real estate department is one of the best when you look at the, the corporate world because they don't worry about tomorrow, that they're really trying to create great user experiences for their people over the long term. And Google's a company that thinks about, you know, in decades and hundreds of years, mm -hmm. the kind of the impact they can have. So a, I think that's the kind of, you know, mentality that you want to have with a neighbor such as that, not someone who's just looking at quarter by quarter returns and all of a sudden some, you know, quarters you're up and some you're down and it really kind of changes the whole mentality of this area. Uh, Google doesn't see the world from that perspective. Adobe bet on San Jose over a decade ago when you were running sustainability at eBay. In this new tower that they're building here, they're going to be adding 4,000 employees to the downtown area. What do you think that they saw and what is the big shift from others moving into the downtown urban core? You know, I'm not exactly sure what they saw when they first came here, but I do know Scott Ekman who runs real estate there now. And I think what Scott would tell you is that, you know, a lot of their employees live relatively close to San Jose and they're trying to figure out systems where people aren't spending you know a few hours a day in cars uh, I think they also care about you know an urban infrastructure that has restaurants it has um, a theater district it has a lot of the amenities that, that people care about and it's much different than being in a business park in the middle of Santa Clara Sunnyvale so I, I think that they were certainly a pioneer you know uh, over a decade ago and I think that it was a wise bet, and I, I think that they're doubling down because this is something that, you know, urbanization for corporations like a, a Adobe is the right, pl right place to bet, it's the right place to hire and retain your employees. So, so I think they're here for a long time. 
If you were to guess, would you think that Adobe is going to be acquiring more properties in downtown besides the one that they're building right now? You know, I, I think whether it's Adobe or it's Google or some of the other tenants that start to, to work their way into the, this landscape, I, I think they will be acquiring more property just to make sure they can accommodate some of the growth they need. That is, a, it's, it's a, I think it's a good thing for the city, but it's also a challenge. I, I think you don't want this to become a one or two you know, pony town. You want to make sure that you know, small and medium-sized companies can thrive here as well. So how, how do you balance those things? And as we're building our portfolio, that's one of the things that we're really trying to take into account. That's great to have you know, a large tenant be an anchor for projects, but how do we allow these other folks to, to, to thrive? I think the other thing is that some of these companies, as they come here, they're recognizing that they have to help with the retail, you know, the ground plan of the space. So mm -hmm. having your employees just come to your own cafeteria or being somewhat insulated, um, I, I think you need to push more people on the street and create more activity there. So I think we'll start to see a lot more of that as well. So you've been working with a lot of entrepreneurs and uh, retail folks here in the downtown. How has retail changed in San Jose over the last few years, and, and what do you see as the future of retail? So when we talked about the strengths of San Jose, uh, you know, the, the list goes from a great airport to um, you know, great weather and sports teams, you know, some things that, that we talked about. Retail is not one of the strengths of, of San Jose. It's a real challenge. Uh, the good news is that if you told us that we had to widen the streets of San Jose, or change the climate, you, know, you can't fix that. This is something that can be resolved, but it takes a, a strategic plan. It takes something more than just landing one or two good tenants. It's gonna take you know, landing 10 or 15 tenants. I was recently in Boulder, Colorado, and there's a street there by the end, Pearl Street. And if you walk down Pearl Street, that, that is kind of the vision that I have for, for the downtown That's quarter. That's a beautiful street. That's a great street. It's vibrant, it's healthy, it, it, it you know, serves lots of different communities. And so we need to put together more of a ground plan to help you know, make sure that can take place and there's an infrastructure that companies can really kind of knit the way into. Could you talk a little bit about our local vendor and artist scene, specifically maybe local color, San Pedro market, uh, Sofa market? Yeah, listen, we, we, we are completely committed to help those guys. And, and the reason that we want to help those guys is uh, they care so much about the city. They, they, they do things that, that most people don't realize by you know, taking care of murals and, and cleaning up areas of the city that, that most people just don't understand the difficulty that's required in doing that. Uh, we recently uh, worked on a project where we're bringing a company called Co Local Color uh, into one of our buildings. They're going to take over the basement there. It's about 20,000 square feet. Right behind that, we have two other artisan groups. One's called SV Creates, the other's called Collide, and they'll be in 10,000 feet and 7,000 feet, respectively. Um, we're not really charging rent. We're making sure they're paying for the utilities, but the rent that we want them to pay is to create a vibrancy, vitality uh, in that area of town, uh, because they, they really do start to create the heart and soul of what the city becomes. Uh, so we are going to work our rear ends off to, to spend time with them. We're considering putting together an art walk right now that would go from Sofa all the way through the heart of the city and then at the Armory uh, to allow these various groups to start to work with one another to create a place where you can come on a Sunday afternoon or if your friend flies in on a Thursday afternoon, here's something they can do and, and start to experience some of the richness that San Jose has to offer. Um, so those are some of the programs we want to start to work on with those guys. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into San Jose State. It's a huge contributor to Silicon Valley's tech job engine and talent pool. How do you see the university integrating further into the downtown in the next 10 years? Well, listen, as you know, uh, Apple hires more people from San Jose State than any other university in the country right now. Uh, the amount of engineers that come out of San Jose State you know, actually kind of dwarfs what comes out of Stanford or, or uh, uh, Cal. So this is a real, when these companies are growing, one of the, the, the most important assets they're looking for is people. So San Jose State has that. I think with regards to the integration part, it's really a mindset. I think that the, the city is really lucky right now to have Mary and Charlie Foss, uh, you know, um, as key executives at San Jose State to make sure that there's more of a dialogue. And I, I think that as long as people are actively doing that and trying to figure out, can you put university operations somewhere in the city? Can you have classrooms? Can you have guest lectures where, where kids are coming back and forth? Do you have a really vibrant F&B world so those kids are actually, you know, coming to the city and spending more time within it? That's what's going to allow that, that uh, um, uh, relationship to really grow. But there has to be things to attract students and want to make them stay and spend time in, in the core of the city. Is one of those things additional student housing? Listen, we, we, you know, right now in San Jose State, about 3,500 kids live on campus. I think their goal is to have at least the freshman, if not the freshman and sophomore class live there. So that's closer to 12 or 14,000 kids. So I, I do think that they have to work with private partnerships to create more of that housing so it becomes less of a commuter school 
Um, and I, I do believe that will be a great way, especially for upperclassmen, to be three or four blocks away from the university and then have housing here and become more integrated in the community. So we've talked in the past about the rough around the edges stigma that San Jose has had. I know that was one of the draws for you in coming to San Jose. Have you been seeing that fade away? Well, you know, uh, I'm not sure it was so much of a draw, but, but more of an opportunity that we saw. I mean, we, we, we felt there's some things here that, that were really fixable. Um, so kind of that roughness. Uh, I, I do think there's a certain grit that you want to have in a city that makes it more authentic. I remember when um, uh, Santana Road first came online, it just felt a little fake. And over time, it's gotten more and more authentic. Um, I think that San Jose has a lot more authenticity, and, and that's why we think it has so much potential. Um, but listen, there, there are still some fundamental problems here that need to be resolved. You know, like we talked about earlier, retail is broken. Uh, there's some homeless issues. Nothing you know, at, at all in comparison to what happens in San Francisco. But if it's something we don't embrace and really come up with strong you know, re uh, resolutions around, uh, it will become more and more problematic. Um, so some of these edges, you know, I'm hoping that the government sees them as clearly as we do and really starts to take some positive actions. And I think the best way to address some of these is we come together as a community. And it's not just pushing the problem down the road. It's trying to embrace those problems and, and solve them and provide some leadership for other cities in the Bay Area, for other, other cities in the country, about you know, how these things can be taken on and, and dealt with in a very positive way. As an investor and advisor to Urban Catalyst, how do you see our role in the growth of downtown San Jose? Well, what, what impresses me most about you guys is your, uh, your integrity, your uh, expertise, and commitment to San Jose before San Jose was what it is today. You, know, you, you guys have been in the trenches for a number of years. You brought some of the most iconic projects out of the ground here to really help the city build some of the momentum that we're seeing today. And it's easy for someone to say, I'm putting together an Opportunity Zone fund and I'm in New York City and I should fly out to, to San Jose and see what I can do, as opposed to saying, this is a city I care about, this is a city I want to change, this community, I want to make it a really special place. And by the way, I'm bringing Opportunity Zone fund money into that equation. Um, to me, that's healthy, it's smart, and it's a way to really create something extraordinary here in the Valley. So I think what you guys are doing is going to be replicated in other areas as you work your way up the peninsula, but this will be a great model to demonstrate how it can be done correctly. Uh, and that's why I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. So, as you know, our signature project, the Fountain Alley Building, is going in across from your signature project, the Bank of Italy. Um, the Bank of Italy Building, of course, one of the most iconic towers in Silicon Valley. We're both right next to a future BART porthole. Can you talk to us about the synergy between those two buildings and how you've been able to bring people together to really lift up that entire neighborhood? So when, when, I, when I think about community, I don't think about a real estate you know, acquisition or a real estate development. Um, I really think about the people. And it's, oftentimes you go to architect's office, you see these beautiful renderings, and you go, where are the people? And at the end of the day, you know, building without people in it doesn't matter. Right? There, there's no experience that, that can be created by an empty building. <laughs> um, so my, my, my belief is that what's happening in Fountain Alley, there, there's a handful of areas in the city that, that we believe can kind of become centers of a, uh, lots of activity and vibrancy. And so we need to make sure that these buildings not only accommodate you know, people during their working hours, but also you know, where do they have lunch? How do they get outside? How do they have great air? How do they have acoustics that allow them to concentrate and to be more productive? And then to walk outside and have a mimosa on a Sunday you know, with their family. We have to create special places that feel, to me, more like you see in Europe, uh, where it's not so much about just killing yourself to get to that next IPO. It's making sure that you enjoy the journey you can certainly work hard and you want to be as productive as possible, but on Fountain Alley, we have one of those opportunities to really create a special place. Like in the back of my mind, when I go to Trevi Fountain, I, I see such a, you know, an amazing place. And it's like, why don't we have one of those here in, in San Jose or somewhere in the Silicon Valley? And I, I'm hoping that's one of the things that will surround our building with our great user experiences like that. Why do you think there's been such heavy investor interest in downtown San Jose? And do you see Opportunity Zone funds like us as being an accelerator of sorts for the downtown? When you look at trends, I think some of this investment that's coming to downtown San Jose now is pretty obvious. Um, I think Google added a lot of credibility to that. But one of the more excited investors that, that, that I've seen come to downtown is Jay Paul. Um, I, I think that he is not a land banker. He is a person who's going to make quick decisions. He understands a lot of how technology companies are operate and the importance of bringing things to market quickly, being able to hire. Um, so to me, it's really inspiring to see what he's doing. Uh, based upon that, I think you'll see more people follow. But a, um, 
You know, initially, uh, I just think that we all recognize that urbanization is, is part of uh, all of our futures, and we can't continue to live in the sprawl that the Silicon Valley has accommodated for all these years. Um, so when you really kind of step back and just copter up a little bit, it's really not that difficult to see, you know, why this is an important place to, to bring that kind of density. So Gary, thank you very much for coming Thanks. and joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks again for inviting me. Um, and thanks all of you for joining us for our fireside chat series. For more information, visit urbancatalyst.com.